Good evening. I hope this is coming through. <laughs> uh, it should be. It shows that it is. Uh, I'm Pastor Mike White of the Refuge Church. This is Tyler Barnes, uh, one of my schoolmates and roommate for this week. Uh, we're in Morelia, Mexico uh, on our missions trip, uh, precarious uh, Birmingham, Alabama. And uh, We've been out doing street ministry today, and we're getting ready to head to a church uh, tonight to do some more ministry and everything. And so uh, uh, we had a good time this morning giving away hugs and uh, balloons and doing skits and dancing and talking and praying for people. Uh, it, it was a good time in the Lord and with all these people uh, that are on our missions trip with us. And so uh, we just been blessed and uh, had beautiful weather today, had good uh, fellowship, met new people, uh, and got to talk with them. And uh, it's just been a good day and looking forward to a good night tonight and, uh, at the church that we're going to. Uh, so uh, we just wanted to talk to you a minute. Uh, Tyler and I have been talking about some of the stuff the Lord laid on our hearts to share on the missions trip, and uh, we talked to some of the others, and it was kind of a thread run all the way through it about the love of God and the goodness of God. And the goodness of God is one of the uh, first things I really remember God, the Holy Ghost really revealing to me, the spirit of truth guiding me into uh, that God was good. And Psalms 34 and 8 says, Taste and see. Uh, that the Lord is good, blessed is a man who trusts in him. And that word there means experience, experience him. And so you've got to experience, you can't just hear about him, you've got to experience him uh, for yourself. Uh, I've heard about, you know, and watched on TV other countries and never really, really been to one like this, especially on uh, so a spiritual trip, been on vacation, uh, you know, different parts of the United States. One time went to the Bahamas, the only time I'd ever been out of the United States. But this is a total different culture. And uh, you, you know, and stepping out and doing what the Lord tells you to do, I mean, that's when you taste the goodness of God, when you see um, the blessings that God has placed on your life and what he has revealed to you that you can reveal to others and that you can share with them and tell them about the goodness of God. And so people are receptive uh, to the goodness of God and to the love of God. They're receptive to that. We've seen that today on the streets of uh, Morelia downtown. I mean, this is a city of what? 850,000? A lot. A lot of people. And, they, and there was a lot of people out today. And so, and they would come up, and some come for prayer, and some come to talk, and some come uh, to get a hug, and just be encouraged, and it encouraged us. And so, God has just uh, been so good uh, to us, and uh, and He's been good ever since the beginning. Moses uh, told him he wanted to see His glory in Exodus thirty-three. He said, "I want to see Your glory." Uh, and he said in verse 17, he said, I will do this thing that you have spoken for you have found grace in my sight and I know you by name. And he said, please show me your glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and I will have compassion on whom I will compassion. And uh, he said, but you cannot see my face. No man shall see my face and live. But the Lord said, uh, here is a place by me and thou shalt stand on the rock shall be when my glory passes by that I will put you in the cleft of the rock and will cover you with my hand while I pass by I will take away my hand you shall see my back part of my but my face shall not be seen so he asked for the glory and God said I'm going to show you my goodness because his goodness is his glory and in verse uh, chapter 34 and 5 he said now the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord and the Lord passed by him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful, gracious, long-suffering, abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, 
forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. And so he said, I'm going to show you my goodness. So his goodness was in his mercy. His goodness was in his grace. His goodness is in his long suffering. Uh, he said abounding in goodness and truth. So his goodness is in truth. And uh, he said, I keep mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity. And so forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, those are the good things of God. This is what God does for us because we need each one of these things in our life. We need the goodness of God uh, in our life so that we can have these things. And uh, I was making sure I wasn't getting on Tyler's notes because Tyler said last night, at Romans 2, 4, and he reminded me it's it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. It's the goodness of God. And so if people know how good God is, then that's what leads them to change their mind. Well, how are they going to know this? Well, they'd have to get a Bible and they'd start reading and or they'd go somewhere and they'd hear the word. But it comes through you and I, the people in the church and who make up the church. If we, you know, are welcoming welcoming to them if we're friendly and kind and open to them you know uh then they can see the goodness of god through us because we are the manifestation we're the vessels that he used uh you know to get his how do i say this to get his word out there, to get his love out there. The, the, these are who he uses. Uh, in Luke 11 and 9, he was telling them about the Father. He said, if you being evil know how to give good gifts, he said, how much more uh, will the Father, now notice he's, he's the Father. He said, he, if he's your Father, he how much more would he give the Holy Ghost to them to ask? And I thought, you know, every good gift comes through the Holy Spirit. It comes through the Holy Ghost. And so he said, when I give the Holy Ghost, he says he's revealing all these gifts of the Holy Ghost unto us. This is how we get the gifts of the Holy Ghost. But he said, you must ask the Father for the Holy Ghost. You must ask him for these things because we want to be conformed to the image of his Son and be like him. And we know Jesus operated in the Spirit. Uh, and he walked in the spirit and he operated in the spirit. And he went about doing what? Good. good. That's all he ever done. Went about doing good. And so we do good. And it's the Holy Spirit that's working through us. Your flesh is is not, it doesn't want to participate. You know, it doesn't want to do that. We didn't want to do a skit today. We, we were we were tried we tried our Rebellion. best we tried our best get out of it but holy ghost said no you're going to do this and it turned out better than we had ever practiced it it turned out good it turned out too good it turned out so good we got to do it again we got to do it tonight <laughs> so we had to do it again they said we want you to do this get tonight I'm like, oh, we won't make that mistake twice no we will not we will not. <laughs> we thought it was one and done we're out We've done our skit. We've done this, you know, grown men and women out there doing a skit on the street. We're done with this. But no, we weren't done. We're going to do it again tonight. And and I pray it just touches somebody. And I pray it touched somebody today. It helped us. I know it did. It, it helped. <laughs> it helped each, it, the ones that done it because we were kind of surprised ourselves that it went off as good as it did. And, uh, the Holy Spirit just helps you. I mean, he's our helper when we step out there and we do something. Now Tyler's got something about the... Yeah, I got a little Spirit. something. just want to say thanks, Mike, for letting me be on here and share a little something with your sheep. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the scripture that's been coming to mind since uh, we came on this trip and God's been telling us what the, the direction to go in on the goodness of God and fruit and all this... All this right here in the scripture, one of the scriptures is Ephesians 5, 8, and 9. And it says, For you were formerly darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. So walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is pleasing to the Lord. It's just crazy that it says the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness. And it's just been impressive to me because he did steal my stuff. 
<laughs> but uh, Romans 2, 4, that says it's the goodness of God that leads men. It says repentance, but if you look at the Greek word met, meta, uh, metanoia, it means to change the way you think, to change, to go in a different direction. And uh, when we get a hold of God's goodness, not how well can we perform, are we operating in the gifts, are we, did I cuss, did I dip, did I chew, did, what did I do, have I done something I shouldn't have done? When we focus on that, then we just continue to produce that fruit, because that's the seeds, that's, that's what we're sowing. When that's all we talk about is what we haven't done right, that's the seeds we're sowing, and that's the harvest we'll get, and that's the produ fruit you'll produce. Because when you sow seed, you reap a harvest, and what's what's a harvest? It's the fruit that yeah. it that it bore. Amen. So, when you don't focus on the God, uh, on the goodness of God, then you can't produce God results. But if you want God's kind of results, you want to walk in godly wisdom, in supernatural godly wisdom, to where you can make decisions, whether it be in your own relationships or in financial situations or just everyday activity. You can access the mind of Christ and walk in godly wisdom if you'll focus on who He is and that that He's good. That he is love. Amen. That's the key. The key is the love of God and the goodness of God. That's what's going to lead somebody to change. Not you trying to preach at them. Not you giving them doctrine. Uh, not them trying to fix them. It's just simply when you focus on Jesus and how good he is to us and what he's done for us, it will teach you, like it says in Titus 2.11, that the grace of God teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. Go ahead, Mike. Amen. Yeah. Acts uh, ten thirty eight. It said, "How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. It was in relationship. It was in the presence of God with him and the Holy Ghost." And so it, Tyler mentioned, you know, what we sow is sowing and reaping. This is a kingdom principle uh, that we sow and we reap. That's the way it works. You sow a little. You, you reap a little. I mean, it just works like that. And whatever you sow is what you're going to reap. So Jesus went about sowing good. He sowed good. And you say, yeah, but they nailed him to a cross. He didn't uh, reap good. No, he reaped good because he reaped the salvation of, of mankind. And that was what he wanted to do. He wanted to save mankind. He was sent to do this. And he said he gave his life. They didn't really take it. They didn't murder him. They didn't kill him. He gave his life. He could have called angels and come and got him, but he gave his life because that's what he wanted to reap. And then so in the resurrection, and when it was when his body was sown into the ground and he was raised the third day, he he reaped resurrection for each and every one of us and that was good and now we can be with him and so he did reap good he he did uh after he paid the penalty for man uh and so it said for the joy set before him he uh endured the cross despising the shame and so he he sowed himself all of himself but he also sowed good while he was here and healing was good, and deliverance was good, healing the brokenhearted, setting the captives free. All those things were good. That's what he came said I came to do. And so he left us as the church, as the ecclesia here, uh, the governing body here in this kingdom, to do good. That's what he wants us to do, to do good. Uh, we had a little meeting this morning, and, you know, um, all the men was together, and we was talking about some things, and it struck me because one of the guys has been down here uh he said about eight times, and he said what he's learned is uh, his wife is from here. And he said what I've learned is, he said these people know Jesus. They know God. He said they're very religious. But he said they don't know the uh, fellowship with him. They they think it's by works that they have to do. And and he said, they, he said don't be so concerned about doctrine as you are about just showing them love and just loving on them. That's the way. You, you win them over, and that's the way it opens their heart because they see somebody that's just willing to love on them and and be good to them. And then, so that's what God wants us to do, to show them his love. And then you can disciple them and teach them, and that's what we ought to be doing in, in, you know, in our everyday lives. Whoever you are in your everyday lives, you ought to be showing the love of God. And then once you gain their confidence and friendship, then you can begin to sow into their life the word of God that God has given to you. 
You got something else, man. Yeah, go ahead. right off what you just said, <laughs> that last sentence. <laughs> he said, to represent God, but how can you represent God unless you're producing the same results in your uh, actions and in your, your words and in your life that God or Jesus produced in his life? And there's no way you can do that unless you're producing the, spr the spr uh, fruit of the Spirit, which is love, joy, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and uh, self-control. <laughs> I forgot that one. Yeah. But uh, I just wanted to go back to Ephesians 5, 9, where it says, For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. The truth, the Word of God. When we take in the word of God and we plant those seeds, when we take the scripture and learn those truths and apply it to our own heart and meditate on it and ponder on it until it settles in our heart so we can produce that fruit. When we take that truth in and plant it in our heart, then we can produce the fruit of the spirit, which in turn will draw people to Christ because it's the goodness of God in it. The only place they're going to see the goodness of God, unless it's some kind of supernatural miracle, is going to be through his representatives. Amen. That's why we have to be disciples and not converts. We're supposed Amen. to go make disciples. He said, if you continue in my word, he said this to the Jews that believed on him. He said, if you continue in my word, you'll be my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth. And the truth that you know, that will make you free. So the only way to change and to be different is to take in the truth, but to continue in it. You have to meditate on it, just like it says in Joshua 1.8. This book of the law, to meditate in it day and night that you'll have good success. It says it in Psalms 1, that if you bless is a man who doesn't who doesn't behave and act like the, the ungodly and the sinners and the scornful, but he delights in the Lord and in his law, and he meditates the day and night. And whatever he does will prosper. It's the same thing. I got one more scripture before I get back to you. Go ahead. It says Revelation 12, 11. Not only is it, is it the truth that's important, but it's also your testimony, how God has changed you. Not you changed you, but your relationship with him, you focusing on him and his goodness and it changing your heart and then the results of that, how powerful it is. And it puts it in the same sentence as one of the most powerful substances we know of. And it says, and I'm going to do a little backdrop. I'm going to, I'm going to go back two verses. So I'm going to go here to Revelation 12, 10. It says, Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brothers who accuse them before our God day and night has been cast down. And it says they overcame him, the devil, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And I'm going to get to the most important part right next at the end of that scripture. But it says they overcame by the blood of the lamb. They were cleansed by the blood of the lamb, but they overcame the devil between what God, what Jesus did for them and then speaking it to people. This is what Jesus did for me. Amen. That's what overcomes the enemy and other people. Not only in your life, speaking right. that, but speaking it over other people and telling them, hey, Jesus saved me from addiction or, or whatever you're dealing with. And they say, oh, there's evidence. Because yeah. you preach in doctrine, you're just telling them another man who wrote another book in their mind. But when you show them, people are a lot less likely to deny your personal experience more than, I mean, they'll deny scripture before they deny your personal experience. Right. So the very last part, the most important part of that scripture says, and they love not their lives unto the death. They put <laughs> self last and they put God first. Go ahead, Mike. That's awesome. And that's not something the flesh we were reading last night about the, the spirit lusts us against the flesh and the flesh against spirit. And that word we looked it up was desire. The, the flesh desires something different than the spirit and the spirit desires something different than the flesh well the spirit is life you know if we live to the flesh you're going to die and he said to live in the spirit is life and peace is what it is because the spirit takes that word of god and brings it inside of us and it's peace you know and and so that that's that's what we need, you know, and that's, like Tyler said, that's where we overcome him, not only in our lives, but in other people's lives. And and people need, because they don't know uh, about, you know, they don't know this. They know religion real well, but they don't know the power that, that's behind uh, the Holy Spirit that God has given unto the believers, that they can have the power working in their lives. They have the power to overcome. They have the power to uh, cast down, to bind, to loose. That's what he told them. He gave them the keys of the kingdom. 
And we have this power in earth and vessels that we're able to do these things that he's called us to do because it's him that does it. We, he just needs a willing vessel. He just needs somebody uh, that that will come. Uh, I was kind of surprised when they told us they'd hold up his sign that says free hugs out on the street, downtown of a big city. And I was amazed when we got there and I thought, well, you know, how many, what will, how, what will happen, you hold up a sign. And I'm amazed that the people that walk over couldn't even speak your language and just want to hug. Yeah, that surprised me because I ain't that person. <laughs> <laughs> it was just amazing. People hug you and, you know. And One guy just, hugged me a little too much. Yeah. <laughs> he jumped up on me and put his legs around me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he liked you because you could pick him off the ground. And, but he was, he hung out with us for a while. He hung around there and talked mm -hmm. to different people and everything. So, I mean, uh, just some people just came through and got a hug and just walked on, you know. And it made them smile, you know. It they be you could see them walking through there and their face kind of you know how everybody's is just like this. We're living life. We're not smiling. You walk through and they'd see that sign. They just kind of look at it and you'd go. I want a hug, and they'd walk over, and they'd start grinning, and they'd start smiling. They'd walk off smiling and laughing. I guess they laughing at herself that, hey, I hugged a complete stranger, you know. But it's just connection, you know. God made us to be all together, and he wants us to be together, and he wants us to get along and have fellowship. And there's people out there that are lost. They don't know what we know that God's revealed to us through the Word and the Holy Spirit, and he wants them to know it. And I, we've been saying we're his ambassadors that you know we know what he's done for us we know how good he is we've we've tasted we've experienced god's goodness in our lives at some point if you're just born again if you're just born again you have tasted that goodness that god saved you yes. you've tasted that and there's so much more to taste it's like some of the meals we've been eating down here who don't make the wife mad son. you think man you think well, that was good. It couldn't get no better. I warned them, Angie. And then they top it. They'll top it the next time with something better. And then they bring out dessert. Every meal you have dessert down here. And they bring out that dessert and you're thinking, I may not like this dessert. It, but it's good. It is very good. And and some of the stuff, most of the meals I've never had. And so I'm thinking, I don't know if I like this or not. There's not been a one. It just keeps getting better. Mm -hmm. But you have to taste it. And uh, I've took pictures of all of them, but I show you the pictures when I get back. It'll make your mouth water, but you can't taste it because, you know, it's just a picture. And the Word of God is on the pages, and you read that. And that's good. It make your mouth water, but you've got to experience it for yourself. You got something else? Yep. Go ahead. I just have to look up. I won't be able to tell this location. So... It says in 1 Corinthians 1.30, I'll tell you what it says here in just a second. But <laughs> he said, we've been talking about goodness. And uh, scripture, Psalm 23.6 says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Well, it does more than just follow you. That scripture is true. I'm not saying that it's not. But it says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Well, it's even more than that. That's what it said in the Old Testament. It's absolutely, it's accurate and true. But now, in this new covenant established on better promises, we have the one whose backside Moses got to see. That backside and that whole front side lives within us. Amen. We have all the goodness of God living on the inside of us. We're not missing a piece. We have the fullness of the Godhead indwelling us bodily. We got all the goodness we need. You just got to get it out. But I want to say, I mentioned something earlier about the wisdom of God and making I just... I feel like the Lord's telling me to go back to this. Somebody is going to see this or is seeing it now that is wondering about uh, using or activating or stepping off into the wisdom of God and godly decisions and finances and, and in relationships and just everyday decisions. And I felt like he just pointed me back to 1 Corinthians one thirty that says that God gave us Christ to be wisdom. He made Christ unto us wisdom. So we have wisdom living on the inside of us. Not only that, but Jesus is the creator of wisdom. He has all wisdom and he lives within us. We have the mind of Christ. But I wanted to say in Proverbs 1, it tells you what this book will do. In chapter 1, it tells you that the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, 
what the purpose is. It's to know wisdom and instruction and to be able to perceive the words of understanding. And then it says to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity. That right there, what else do you need for any decision in life you have? If you can perceive the words of wisdom, then you can receive them if you can perceive them. If you can see them, you can choose to receive them. If you can perceive, you can receive. Because what comes before receiving? Preceiving. Right. <laughs> That was good. Well, we're going to jump off here. We're going to get ready uh, to leave out and go to a, a church. And uh, we're looking forward to that. Um, Not the skip part. It's, it's just. <laughs> Not the dancing, growing you know, people dancing in front of it, people. It's just <laughs> stretching us even more. And we've been mm. stretched, I thought, all we could stretch. But. Uh, I wanted to say this and thought of a minute ago. Brother Randall preached a message Sunday, changing focus or putting your focus on something else. And I, 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 I dwelt on that because what am I focusing on? And and I, I and whenever I start thinking about stuff, I, I begin to notice in me first, and and then in others, that we focus on things uh, because it ain't always like we want it or like we would desire it. We and, magnify it. Yeah, and we focus on that so much that, and on the negative, on how, you know, I wished it was this way or that way. Put your focus on, me and the guy was talking on the bus today, and he's talking about the focus, and as long as Peter focused on Jesus, it didn't matter the storm. He was, he was going to Jesus, but when he took his focus off of that and put it on the storm, he said the storm was there before. Storm was there, but he, his focus changed. He changed his focus. And so we got to keep our focus on the Word of God and keep our focus off of our flesh because this flesh just never is satisfied. It just, you know, it's set on destruction. But our spirit and our soul, our mind, will, and emotions are, you know, our spirit is, is perfect. You know, it's, it's whole. But our soul needs... It's being in the process of being saved because we're renewing the Word of God, renewing our minds with the Word of God, and we're cha and that changes stuff. You know, it changes. I was thinking, Dave, that changes. If I renew my mind with the Word of God, that can change my emotions and that can change my will, uh, and to the will of God. Because if you sit down and, and look at it, God and and hearing other people's testimonies, God has a will. And a plan for people's lives, and and to see those people living out the plan of God for their life, and how much joy they have, and how much peace they have, uh, to give up a career, to give up a home, and move to another country, and and just focus on loving on people, and, and seeing them come to Jesus, and seeing them get the fullness, uh, and baptized in the Holy Ghost, and everything else that. That makes you see that God's plan. See, that goes back to Revelation twelve eleven. That it's by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their of, of your testimony that you overcome the enemy. When you, right. it's one thing when you read it, you get revelation, and sometimes it goes from your head to your heart, and it changes you. And but it's another when you experience it. When right. somebody else says, "Look, this is what happened," and then these other twenty five people tell you the same thing, it's right. like either they're all liars <laughs> or it's working. <laughs> yeah. And I, we can say it's working. It's working right. for them. Got that much joy, you can just tell they got that much joy when things ought to be frustrating. We've had uh, transportation issues two days in a row, oh, and in the sun, yeah. And we've had to stand and wait for hours, but we were we just rolled on. And, and the leadership here, they just you know, patient and good to the people, they weren't upset, and they just you know, rolled on with it. And we're still kind with the people because they're. They're focused. They're focused on Jesus all the time, no matter what's going well, on. They're producing his fruit. It's not that they're yeah. so great or we're so great. You just focus on Jesus and yeah. he'll produce that fruit. And you ain't going to do it perfect. There's some flesh that gets on it. Yeah. We don't talk about that. <laughs> we don't talk about that. But just focus on, on him, you know, because he is good. He is good all the time. We love you. Uh, we'll be back. Uh, next week sometime. We might pop on here again one day. Uh, God gives us revelation. We might pop on here uh, sometime this weekend or sometime and give you an update uh, from down here before we head back on uh, Monday and uh, just update you on what God is doing down here. But we love you all and appreciate everything you uh, do for us and uh, just want you to have the fullness of God in everything you do. We got to go. We'll see you next time.